Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about controlling function of management. You must have heard about controlling and you must also be aware of, about the fact that it's the last uh, function of management which comes after planning, organizing, staffing and directing. But did you know that Gulek and Arvik also gave another term called as paused corp which divided controlling into three further parts. All this and a lot more interesting facts about controlling which are important for the examination will be discussed in this video. So let's start the session. So this is the chapter on organization control. Now I shall be covering the entire chapter in one go along with uh, a lot of questions, practice questions which will help you in understanding what kind of questions can be asked in the examination. So let's first of all start with the five functions of management which have been very popular which are also, also mentioned in the syllabus and questions directly or indirectly based upon these five functions of management have always been asked in the examination. So these five functions are planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling. Controlling as you can see here is the last function of management but at the same time one of the most important functions of management. Why? The reason being that the cycle of planning, organizing, staffing, directing, controlling is a circular cycle. It's not a chain. It does not start with planning and end with controlling. It also comes back to planning at the same time. And because it is a circular chain, so whatever you do in these four functions, planning, organizing, staffing and directing, everything is analyzed in this fifth function. And the carrying out of the first function of planning after controlling is not possible unless our controlling function is efficient and effective. Therefore, controlling becomes all the more important from organization and management point of view. So if we look at the definition of controlling, it simply says it's the process of measurement of performance of persons within the organization by comparing against predefined standards and taking corrective action. So these are certain keywords as I've always mentioned whether you are writing in an exam or whether you are clicking among the objective questions that you have, it's very important to remember and understand all the keywords that are related to a particular topic. The keywords related to controlling are measurement of performance of uh, the employees or measurement of performance by the management. Uh, second is comparing the performance against predefined standards and then taking corrective action. For example, let's say that you work in a factory which produces or manufactures, let's say, Coke, Coke bottles. Okay. Uh, the performance of, uh, let's say, I am the, a worker working in the factory and my performance, this is my name, Anuj, and my performance is on a daily basis, let's say, 100 bottles per day. This is my performance. But the standard performance is, is let's say, 120 bottles per day. So controlling, under controlling method or un under controlling function, my performance will be measured first of all. Secondly, it will be compared with the predefined standard which here is 120 per day and then corrective action will be taken. It will be analyzed why is there a gap of 20. Is it because of skill? Is it because I am not skilled enough? Is it because I don't have the right tools? Is it because the environment that I'm working in is not uh, good enough or is not efficient enough for me to produce 120 bottles per day. Is it because of technology that is being used or is it because uh, I'm not interested or is it because of some cultural or let's say personal problem, not skill problem, but personal psychological problem that I'm facing because of which I'm not able to create 120 bottles per day. There can be a variety of reasons. Understanding that there is a gap between the standard and uh, the performance of the employee and then identifying why this gap exists and then taking the corrective action. All this is done under controlling. So I, th I hope you've understood how important controlling is because it helps us understand as to whatever we are doing is it good enough or not? Okay. Controlling ensures satisfactory performance. Now you must have understood why controlling ensures satisfactory performance as it guides employees to improve their performance over time. 
Controlling function checks whether performance achieved is in conformity with the adopted plan or not. So all these are advantages of controlling which flow directly from the functions of controlling or the features of controlling. So this is a definition of controlling which is important if you are writing in the exam, if it is a, uh, if you are uh, choosing among the objective options then also it is very important that you understand and remember the important definitions because questions can be picked up from important definitions as well. The definition here says by Kuhn's O'Donnell, Kuhn's and O'Donnell, controlling is the measurement and correction of performance activities of subordinates in order to make sure that the enterprise objectives and plans desired to be obtained by them are being accomplished. If you look at it closely, you will see that what, whatever keywords we have just read, the same are being repeated here as well. It says controlling is the measurement and correction of performance. First of all, measurement of performance and then correction of performance activities of subordinates in order to make sure that the enterprise objectives and plan, what are the enterprise objectives and plans? These are the standard performance parameters are obtained by them are being accomplished. Okay. So it is the same thing, the keywords that we just identified. Now uh, there are two basic uh, things here. Number one, we divided the functions of management into planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling, POSDC. But we can also divide it or two set of uh, theorists uh, that is Arvik and Golik, they have also divided it further and they name it as POSTCORP. POS, DCO, R, B, POSTCORP. Here in planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, it is not controlling, it is coordinating. So CO, coordinating, reporting and budgeting, coordinating, reporting and budgeting. And all these three together are a part of controlling. All these three together become what we call as controlling. So controlling is further divided into three more parts, coordinating, reporting and budgeting. All these three combined together to form controlling that has been mentioned here. Now what are the functions of controlling? It is again the same keywords are being repeated again and again but I am reinforcing on the same points in order to ensure that by the end of this session you are very thoroughly prepared with controlling you do not have to look at it once again. Establishment of standard performance which was 120 bottles per day right taking the same coke example. Measurement of actual performance which was 100 bottles per day comparing actual performance with the predetermined standard and finding out the deviations. The deviation here is 20 bottle per day. Now this is a very simplified example. It becomes very complex at times in organizations and taking correct corrective action, identifying what are the reasons behind this deviation and then taking corrective action, whether it is the environment, whether it is my skill, whether it is my psychological uh, you know, makeup uh, in the, in the uh, company whether it is the superiors who are training me or superiors uh, you know uh, method of training or superiors superiors uh, uh, way of uh, way of training me or way of talking to me whether it is the social environment the people is it because the, I am not very friendly with the people I am an introvert or is it because the people are not friendly with me they can they, they can be a lot of reasons for example uh, in US, if you go back 60 years, you would see that blacks and whites would not be working together. Blacks would be working in blue collar jobs and whites would be working in uh, white collar jobs. But if you see in any place a uh, black working with a white in a white collar job, uh, the whites would not like it and would not talk to or would not mix around with the black guy. Okay, So that kind of racism existed which resulted in uh, uh, you know, an inefficient uh, performance in the enterprises. Similar things can also arise in India. There are a lot of places where Hindus are not allowed, a lot of places where Muslims are not allowed, a lot of places where uh, lower class people are not allowed, lower castes are not allowed. So all these uh, are methods or are ways in fact in which uh, our performance can be affected. Okay, So there can be a variety of ways depending upon the culture that you are living in. So that's another thing uh, for another session anyways. Establishment of a standard performance. Now let's come to the first one. The first one said establishment of standard performance 
this is the first step in controlling process a prospective question which can be asked in the examination that's why i'm picking up all these keywords standards act as a benchmark or reference line for appraisal of actual performance so this is the purpose of setting a standard i hope you have understood it the primary purpose of a standard or predetermined standard is to see where the actual performance is and is it in conformity with the standard or not standards should be flexible accurate acceptable and workable these all are very important keywords related to standard please do not forget them remember them very thoroughly flexible why flexible because if it says 120 bottles per day but tomorrow let's say we increase the working hours or reduce the working hours or we get in a new technology which is faster we should immediately be able to remake this standard and increase or decrease it based upon what changes have come upon in the environment it should be accurate accurate means standard does not mean that you just identify out of the blue that okay let's make it 120 per day that's the average of what uh, all the employees are making every day it has to be based upon a scientific analysis on what the standard should be what should be the optimum and most efficient at the same time most workable or doable number of bottles per day that every empl employee should be able to produce or make acceptable acceptable means the employees should not feel that 120 is a lot okay if let's say in place of 120 it is 200 and my performance is 100 i would feel that it's impossible i'm giving out 8 hours and even then i'm achieving only half of what the standard is i would be demotivated i will not feel motivated to achieve this 200 this target of 200 in fact i would be demotivated and my performance might even go down to let's say 75 or 50 bottles per day but if it is 120 which is let's say achievable because let's say without any training i'm already achieving 100 then i would be motivated to produce 120 because achieving targets that we are given give us always give us some kind of motivation and some kind of feeling of importance in an organization or in any social setting i hope you're with me and understanding what i'm trying to say and the last one is workable workable means it should be doable okay it it should not be like it's uh, so big a target so huge a target that it's not doable at all by anybody even if you are working back to back eight hours ten hours a day if you cannot produce 200 bottles per day that means it's not workable at all okay so these are the keywords under establishment of standard performance the second one is measurement of actual performance that's the second uh, second uh, point that we have or second step that we have under controlling measure actual performance of employees nothing to explain there quantitative measurement can be done if standards are set in numeric terms so quantitative measure measurement was 100 bottles per day it can also be qualitative depends upon the work that you're doing performance can be measured in qualitative terms if the measurement is about attitude of workers relationship morale etc let's say in research organizations if you have an employee who is or a team member who's also researching in an organization and if you start giving him quantitative targets like let's say you have to create one paper every two months or uh, you have to let's say uh, write down 40 pages of your research paper per day these are quantitative targets but these are not suitable to the kind of organization that i'm working in the kind of work that is being done by the employees who are scientists in this case so if the uh, organization of the, or if the work demands quantitative measurement then so be it that should be followed quantitative measurement can also be equally effective it does not mean that if your work is not measurable in quantitative terms it is not good enough qualitative sorry i went qualitative qualitative measurement can also be equally effective so here we have divided performance into measurement in in terms of quantitative terms and qualitative terms now you might be given an uh, a question wherein you might be asked which which of them is qualitative which of them is quantitative or if there is a descriptive question you might be asked measurement of actual performance can be done in a variety of ways 
in an organization explain okay those kind of questions can be created comparing performance with standards so the third one is you had when you compare your performance with the standards as i had explained 100 versus 120 bottles per day that's my comparison appraisal of performance is done under comparison that is the third step comparison can be easy if the actual performance is recorded in terms similar to standards if it is 100 bottles per day versus 120 bottles per day comparison is easy if it is 8 hours per day versus 120 bottles per day now comparison is not possible because your standard is 120 bottles per day but your measurement is in terms of hours that the employee is spending in the organization which in this case is 8 hours per day these two are not comparable they cannot be compared qualitative data can be collected using direct personal observation inspection etc so qualitative if it if you are comparing performance with standards and if the standards or the performance is qualitative in nature then the same can be collected using direct personal observation inspection etc direct personal observation means that you are trying to observe the performance of an employee directly by let's say standing there or if he's written a research paper then uh, reading through uh, and checking the research paper yourself those kind of methods are direct personal observation methods and because the name or the uh, feature of direct personal observation itself says that it has to be qualitative in nature okay and then the fourth step is to take corrective actions then you go forward and take corrective actions all deviations need not to be brought to the notice of top management now this is very important management by exception this is a rule which is followed in almost all the organizations let's say the standard is 120 per day my performance was 100 per day and the minimum mark is 60 per day this minimum mark says that if the production goes down goes below 60 per day then the top management will be told about me or will be told about this performance uh, in the organization okay if the performance is above 60 then my superior will be told about this of course my superior will be regularly uh, measuring my performance and will also try to find out the reason of this deviation from the standard but it will not go to the notice of the top management the top management will come to know about this only if it goes below 60 per day which is the minimum which has been identified by the management itself so management by exception means if it goes my performance goes below 60 per day that means there is an exceptional there is an exceptional case or there is a, an important reason to look for why the performance has gone down so much but if the performance is above 60 there is nothing exceptional about it my superior is expected to take care of it and therefore it will not go to the notice of the top management this is called as management by exception wherein the top management is kept in the loop only when there is an exceptional or a very important scenario or a situation okay so corrective actions are taken by the superior in that case corrective actions can be replanning or revision of goals or reassignment of classification of duties so in this case the corrective action can be okay the standard was 120 my performance was 100 per day but my performance is the highest in the entire organization so the standard itself seems to be faulty so you revise the goal you revise the standard make it more realistic that is first option second option is reassignment of classification of duties you tell me okay 100 is a less other people are already achieving 120 you are not doing enough there needs to be a change in the way you're working so you reassign duties you put me somewhere else or you train me further and try to achieve this objective of 120 per day so this is number two is a change with the actual performance number one is a change with the standard itself okay these are the two ways in which corrective action can be taken now the next one is nature of control function we'll be talking about it in the next class and then we'll be taking certain questions